I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. America in shutdown day 17. Now beyond the numbers that flash on the screen, counting those infected and killed uh, by COVID-19, and they're always horrific, we often forget uh, through the sadness and the fear that this is also causing American, our American family a lot of pain. We have to ask, what is this virus doing to us as a people as we deal with the victims and trying to prevent more deaths? Well, apparently, it's turning us into a nation of snitches. If you've observed recurring violations of the Safer at Home order, please continue to let us know at coronavirus.lacity.org slash business violation. You know the old expression about snitches? Well, in this case, snitches get rewards. We want to thank you for turning folks in and making sure we are all safe. I have a question, Mayor Garcetti of Los Angeles. Who keeps us safe from you? It's become abundantly clear that in the midst of this unprecedented health crisis, that there are bad actors everywhere trying to use this to their advantage. Sean and I were just talking about some of them. From washed up celebrities lip syncing their greatest hits on YouTube to politicians using fear to cram down policies that would be inconceivable to us under normal circumstances. Now, while we as a nation continue doing our part to keep ourselves and each other safe, during these very difficult days, we cannot stand idly by as people in either party take advantage of this very complicated and dire situation. As a society, beyond just this immediate situation, we should start looking forward to understand how this experience is going to change us or how it should change us because this is going to be transformative. When do we get back to normal? I don't think we get back to normal. Wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second. I thought we don't get back to normal? Now, I thought the whole point of locking ourselves in our homes was to save lives, of course, and then go back to our old normal lives. Now, the Democrats think they have President Trump in a no-win situation. That's obvious from the way they're acting. So they're not even worried at this point about hiding their agenda. Are you taking into consideration uh, green jobs, green infrastructure? Yes, and if we're gonna do infrastructure, we need it big, we need it bold, and we need it futuristic, which means green. There's traditional infrastructure, roads, bridges, highways, we need that. But we also need new green infrastructure for the future. Phase four, COVID, Meet Solyndra. Maybe we can call it Covindra. Green. <laughs> no, absolutely absurd. And this should be exposed and resisted at all costs by the GOP. Come on. Now, if they're not going green, though, they're going for the guns. Because the same liberal governors who classified abortion clinics as essential businesses rushed in to close gun stores as non-essential. And gun owners, well, they weren't happy. We weren't willing to just sit by and watch people's rights be violated. The right to keep and bear arms necessarily includes the right to acquire them. How can you keep, how can you bear something you can't get your hands on? Now here's Vox's freak out headline from earlier today. Flatten the curve and your Second Amendment rights. Check that out. Well, mayors are also using the virus to empty their jails. Some violent offenders have already gone on to commit other crimes. And since we're talking about lawbreakers, they have advocates in the White House briefing room, too. Over 5 million immigrants in this country do pay taxes through their IT numbers, yet they will not receive any money um, in their stimulus package. How do you suppose they survive during the COVID-19? Well, you know, you're saying undocumented, meaning they came in illegally. And a lot of people would say we have uh, a lot of citizens right now that won't be working. 
So what are you going to do? It's a tough thing. I'm not going to give you a hard and fast answer, because I just want to tell you, it's something I think about, uh, and it's something we're working on. Now, while, of course, everyone feels bad for everyone in this situation here, and we love immigrants, but the operative word, and President Trump knows this, he said it so many times, is legal immigrants. And right now, with everything we're facing, it's got to be Americans first. But of all the scams perpetrated through the COVID nightmare, the effort to change voting, we told you like two weeks ago this was going to happen, is perhaps the worst. Anything to create more opportunities for ballot harvesting or even voter fraud. We need $1.6 billion added to the next COVID response bill to ensure that vote by mail, in-person early voting and election day voting can happen. We'll probably be moving to um, vote by mail. It may mean that you have a circumstance where you have drive in voting, literally you pull up and you have vote. I don't even know what Biden was saying there. Pull up. Kind of trails off at the end of those sentences, doesn't he? But it's not only the Democrats playing games here. Former Trump administration FDA commissioner, well, he's actually seeing his own demand peak, Scott Gottlieb. He's on television several times a day and has the ear of the White House. He's written a kind of roadmap to recovery plan that discusses the need to do a bunch of things to get back to normal, uh, including, in part, tracking citizens' movement during this crisis. Now, some of this is already happening. Sources told The Wall Street Journal that the federal, state, and local governments have already started collecting and studying geolocation data. Now, it turns out that big tech is helping Big Brother track your COVID compliance. Now, we expect this kind of stuff from China and Russia, maybe even Korea, but here? Now, when I was a student in the Soviet Union, they watched our every move. There were informants in our hotel and the coffee, uh, stand-up little coffee shops, and they all received special government privileges for ratting out, you know, tourists into the uh, Soviet Union or even their fellow citizens. My goodness, we can't have that here. As the world continues to spiral out of control, a man, I believe, who is alive and well today, will soon come on the world scene, seeming to have all the answers, and he will bring a false peace to the nations of the world. Three and a half years after this man comes on the world scene, his true intentions will become known. He will bring war the likes of this planet has never seen. And with war will come famine, pestilence, and death. The Bible refers to him as the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. What do we know about the Antichrist? The Antichrist has many names the king of fierce countenance, the prince who is to come, the beast, the son of perdition, the worthless shepherd, the man of sin, the lawless one. The first sealed judgment in the book of Revelation is the releasing of the Antichrist upon the earth. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him and he went out conquering and to conquer. The Antichrist will be evil, yet appear as a savior. He will be outspoken and have great speaking ability. He will have a fierce countenance. The Antichrist will be extremely proud. He will not desire women. He will be a military genius. The Antichrist will be mortally wounded. He will be indwelt by Satan. He will come from a revived Roman Empire. The Antichrist will control a one world monetary system, the mark of the beast, as we read in Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. The Antichrist will control a one world religion as we read in Revelation 17, 1 through 5 and verse 15. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come. I will show you the judgment of the great harlot, which is the one world false religion, who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, 
having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, which is the one world false religion, and of the abominations of the earth. Verse 15, Then he said to me, The waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, which is the world. There are convincing arguments for the one world religion being Catholicism, Islam, and all other religions combining, proclaiming we all worship the same God. This last day's one world religion, the great harlot of Babylon will have great worldwide influence over peoples and nations. Eventually, the harlot, the one world false religion, will lose favor with the Antichrist, who will want to receive the world's worship for himself, as we read in Revelation 17, verses 16 and 17. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, the one world false religion, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind, and to give their kingdom to the beast, until the words of God are fulfilled. The Antichrist will not share the adoration of the world with the prophets and priests of the false religion, no matter how obsequious or fawning they may be. Once the Antichrist gains the world's amazed attention by his miraculous return from the dead, he will turn on the false religious system and destroy it, establishing himself as God, as we read in Revelation 13, 11 and 12. Then I saw another beast, who was the false prophet, coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he, the false prophet, exercises all the authority of the first beast, who is the Antichrist, in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, who is the Antichrist whose deadly wound was healed. The Antichrist will control a one world government as we read in Revelation 13, 7. It was granted to him, the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation, which is the world. We can plainly see the stage is being set for the Antichrist to take his place on the world stage. Will COVID-19 be the trigger that enables the Antichrist to become the leader of the one world government, forcing all people to take his mark and to be worshipped as God? Stay tuned as we watch Bible prophecy unfold right before our very eyes. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Do you know what the most important news story of our generation will be? What is the biggest event that will shake the entire earth within the lifetime of most of you? The second coming of Christ will be the most important event of this generation. If the King of Kings is returning soon to establish the kingdom of God upon this earth, you should be getting ready for it. The Lord Jesus foretold that there would be plagues or pestilences in various places in the last days before he returns, as we read in Luke 2111. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. These things are happening in various places around the world, just as the Lord said they would. Time is over. Get ready. Jesus Christ is coming back, but he is only coming for a holy people those living a holy life. So repent and prepare yourself in holiness to meet him. Zephaniah 2, 1 through 3. Gather yourselves together. Yes, gather together, O undesirable nation, before the decree is issued, or the day passes like chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, who have upheld his justice. Seek righteousness. Seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden 
in the day of the Lord's anger. In verse 3, where the prophet Zephaniah stated, It may be that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. Many people believe this to be a reference to the rapture of the church. If you consider yourself a follower of Jesus, then you should pay close attention to his instruction to you. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. An alarming conclusion from the Department of Justice. According to Yahoo News, the FBI has revealed that China possesses a biological security risk to the United States. That conclusion comes after a series of U.S. Customs and Border Protection seizures of undisclosed vials of materials carried into the United States by Chinese biologists. One incident cited occurred in November 2018 at Detroit Metro Airport. Customs agents uncovered vials containing viable MRES, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, and SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome materials. The U.S. Justice Department report came out last year, just two months prior to the COVID-19 outbreak in Wuhan, China. So what should the United States do? How should the Trump administration respond to alleged Chinese deceptions about COVID-19 and this ongoing biological security threat? Retired Brigadier General Robert Spaulding, senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, joins us with some insights. General Spaulding, Good to have you on again, sir. So first, COVID-19. We know it originated in Wuhan, China. Many people believe the Chinese government hid the truth about it. Now the world has suffered economic shutdowns, around 40,000 deaths worldwide. Should China be held accountable? And if so, how? Well, there's no doubt. And I think uh, one of the ways that we, we can uh, hold them to account is really requiring them to conduct a full investigation where our uh, CDC investigators are actually allowed into the lab, allowed uh, there in Wuhan, the P4 lab, allowed to uh, interview their researchers, allowed to go to the wet market that this, uh, that this uh, virus was, according to them, supposed to have come from. But more importantly, we can, we can actually respond by beginning to decouple from the Chinese Communist Party. It's clear it's not just a danger to our economy as we've lost so many thousands of factories, but it's also a danger to our health and welfare of our citizens. There is no way that we'd have a global pandemic today if the Chinese Communist Party wasn't a totalitarian regime bent on protecting its own image at all costs. And of course, as you say, it isn't only the deaths from COVID-19, it's the economic livelihood of na nations. And you have a doctorate in economics, so tell us, Who's been hurt more economically from this pandemic, China, the U.S., other countries? Well, I think uh, across the world, all countries will be hurt from the pandemic eventually. And I think the Chinese Communist Party's really experienced it first. So they're the first to get their factories back up and, and operating. In fact, they're using this as justification for a global push to increase their control over the global supply chain. So while everybody else is dealing with the virus, they're busy at work trying to convince everybody that we need to move more of our manufacturing over, over there. They also went to uh, the Indians recently and said, hey, let us put up a 5G network so we have access to your population because we use it to track you know, the, the spread of fevers within China. So it's a good idea if, if we install this for you. This is what's going on right now. So. If you if you think about it, this was written about in the in the book Unrestricted Warfare by two PLA, P, two PLA colonels. How you take advantage of a crisis by actually advancing your economic and overall power by you know taking advantage of the countries that are fight, facing the crisis. This is what's going on now. And there's a lot of speculation on social media, and I warn people to be careful about what they take for truth on those platforms, but a lot of people wonder about the origins of this virus. And Senator Tom Cotton speculates it may have leaked from a level four super lab in Wuhan. We've seen two explanations from China, one that it came from diseased bats in a wet market in Wuhan, another that the U.S. military was responsible for unleashing it on China as a bioweapon. Now, you served as senior defense official, defense attache in Beijing, chief China strategist for the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of the Pentagon. So what are your thoughts about that? Well, I have a personal opinion on the origin of the virus, but I don't have any facts. And here's the, here's the challenge that we face. Nobody's going to have facts. Everybody that speculates that the virus came from the wet market is doing that based on conjecture. They don't actually have the evidence. 
anybody that speculates it's coming from a lab, they're also doing that based on conjecture because they don't have the evidence. My guess is we'll never have the evidence because that's the nature of a totalitarian regime. You know, there's a lot of things that we learned about the Soviet Union after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the crumbling of the former Soviet states. But we're not going to find out what actually happened with this virus until the Chinese Communist Party is no more. And who knows when that'll happen. So in the meantime, we need to protect ourselves because we can't trust. We know for a fact that they're doing bio warfare um, research. That is probably dangerous when we have such connectivity, particularly with airlines coming back and forth every single day with Chinese passengers. We found out during the pandemic, if only three weeks earlier we had been warned, we'd have 95 percent less infections right now. This is a this is a challenge of being connected to them. OK, and now the other challenge that FBI DOJ reported seems like Chinese biologists are covertly bringing in all kinds of biological agents into the U.S. Most of these have legitimate research purposes. Now, you served as senior director of strategic planning at the National Security Council. So what is your assessment? How great is the security risk to the people of the United States? Well, you know, they're they're shipping all kinds of illicit things in the United States. I mean, we already know that they uh, ship in, you know, things that poison our pets or exploding toys. We also know they ship in fentanyl. Now we're finding out they're, they're moving biological um, viruses across the border, not just from China to here, but from here to China. So these are all challenges of dealing with this regime that really has, it doesn't believe in rules. In fact, Unrestricted Warfare, the book I was talking about, when you translate it another way, it's called War Without Rules. It's really about how the Chinese Communist Party does not feel it has to obey any of the rules of the international order or even of the United States because it feels it's it's entitled to, to, to create its own set of rules based on the order it wants. That's what's going on. The scale of the coronavirus crisis is growing dramatically all over the world. There are now more than one million reported cases of illnesses. Anthony, and nearly one quarter of those cases are right here in the United States. Yeah, Gail, the numbers can... The numbers continue to surge in hot spots like California, Michigan, Louisiana, Florida, and especially, of course, New York. Medical resources are stretched to capacity and beyond. In New York, the Navy hospital ship Comfort was supposed to help relieve that pressure by handling non-coronavirus patients. But as of now, just 20 of its 1,000 beds are being used. We start with our lead national correspondent, David Begno, who's at New York's Javits Convention center, which is now a military field hospital. David? Anthony, look, it was never supposed to be a hospital that accepted COVID patients. The idea is this would accept the overflow. But yesterday, the governor of New York asked the president, Mr. President, will you accept COVID patients here and let the military run it? And the president said yes. About 25 blocks north of where we are is where the U.S. Naval Ship Comfort is docked here in Manhattan. And Anthony, one hospital executive told the New York Times it is absurd that the military would send a big old ship like that and park it here and not accept COVID patients. The hospitals are overloaded. The ship's got a thousand beds, but it only has 20 patients. The question now is, will the governor of New York go back to the president and ask him, will you let that ship start accepting COVID patients? The things that I see in the ER are scary. This is a video diary from Dr. Matthew Bai. In it, he's describing what he says he sees every day at Mount Sinai Hospital in Queens. You can see all the rooms are filled. Usually these halls are very neat and empty. And now you can see there's patients everywhere because of this. Some nurses in the Bronx took to the streets Thursday to protest the lack of personal protective equipment. Every day when I go to work, I feel like a sheep going to slaughter. New York is one of several states where the governor continues to say they are low on ventilators. At the current burn rate, we have about six days uh, of ventilators in our stockpile. Take Louisiana. They've requested 14,000 ventilators, but they've received fewer than 500 from the federal government. An admiral who's leading FEMA's supply chain task force confirmed that federal supplies are not going directly to the states. They are going to a middleman distributor, and governors say that's when they're forced to bid against each other for the equipment. We have not gotten a line on any additional ventilators. 
Meanwhile, in Richmond, Virginia, 16 people have died at a rehab facility where more than 100 residents there tested positive. Despite the best efforts of the medical staff, we're still seeing really significant spread. In New Jersey, nearly one in three of the long-term care facilities have at least one positive case. This crisis has hit very close to home for Daniel Drum. He's a member of the New York City Council. Five of his friends have died from the virus so far. Whenever somebody goes into the hospital, my thinking is, will I ever see them again? Will they ever come out? The mayors of New York and Los Angeles are now asking their residents to wear masks, scarves, anything they have to cover their faces. And we're waiting to see if the president and the CDC may issue that same guidance today. Tony, get this. Here in New York State, the need for personal protective equipment is still so real that yesterday the governor posted a tweet saying, if you can manufacture PPE, I implore you to do so. We will pay you a premium and please email us at this address. That's the state of where things are right now. Jeremiah 18, 7 through 10. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it, if that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. While the world buckled from the COVID-19 crisis and continues to, Russia for weeks appeared to downplay the threat, even giving aid to other nations. Well, that got us curious here at ABC News Live, how? But as we started to report out the situation on the ground, things rapidly started to change. Patrick Rival has this report. As the coronavirus ravaged Italy, there was a surprising arrival. The Russian military sent to help with disinfection efforts. A diplomatic coup for Moscow and one meant to show Russia has things under control. But at home, Russians have faced an uncomfortable question. Can they trust their government to tell the truth? For weeks, Russia's coronavirus numbers were an outlier. Despite claiming to do more tests than almost any other country, Russia's percentage of reported cases was initially very low, just 0.2%, the second lowest in the world. The cause was unclear. Some blamed poor testing. Others said early border closures had helped. Officials from Vladimir Putin down said things were better than elsewhere. But in a country where authorities have a long history of hiding bad news, suspicions of a cover-up quickly appeared. The government uh, is lying about coronavirus, about the quantity of cases, about the uh, uh, absence of uh, protections. Last week, during a televised exchange, Moscow's mayor finally acknowledged infections were higher than the official number. After that, things shifted, Putin donning a hazmat suit to visit a Moscow hospital. The doctor he met with now testing positive for coronavirus. A testament, perhaps, to a rapidly escalating situation. Moscow, a city of 13 million, now the center of Russia's epidemic as cases reach over 3,500 nationwide. The government telling Russia to lock down. All measures necessary in this situation should be taken. Even if those not involved into the problem consider them a bit excessive for Russia today. But as they say, God helps those who help themselves. People ordered to stay at home, stores shuttered, streets deserted. I went to a pharmacy to buy a mask. There's a shortage. This is it. I'm going straight back home now. And Russia is turning to authoritarian technology to enforce the lockdown. Moscow has one of the largest facial recognition surveillance systems in the world. It's now being used to check people are staying home. Archam Kucharenko developed part of the technology. The system performs real-time analytics of incoming video data. Uh, uh, last week, uh, uh, Moscow uh, uh, was able to uh, find more than 500 people who violate the quarantine. So we can imagine how, my, how much harm these people could do to, uh, uh, to the city and to all other people. But there are fears the government's efforts to maintain a strong facade hide a much shakier reality. 
Anastasia Vasilyeva heads a doctor's campaign group. She's a staunch critic of Putin, but she says she's in touch with doctors across the country who say medical supplies are severely lacking. The situation is awful, really. They are, they are suing the masks uh, themselves. They have no masks, uh, no respirators, no glasses, uh, so no, co co no costumes to protect them. Um, the situation is terrible all, all across the Russia. In Moscow and in St. Petersburg, in, uh, in uh, big cities, the situation is not so bad, but also we have no enough equipment, no enough protection. As in China, Russia is racing to build hospitals, preparing for the inevitable influx of cases. And as elsewhere, Russians are wondering, how bad will it get? As we look at the news, there is no doubt we are in the birth pains Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, 8. We see many of God's remedial judgments manifesting, as if God is warning us of things to come and calling on people to repent. We see war and rumors of wars, famine and pestilence resulting in the deaths of thousands around the world. We are seeing earthquakes, extreme heat, floods, wildfires, tornadoes, hailstorms and hurricanes, all at record levels of frequency and intensity, just like Jesus said would happen just prior to his return. The judgments God will use to punish mankind with during the seven year tribulation will be much worse than any of us can imagine. Still, this is God's grace and mercy, proving to everyone that these judgments come from him and he is still offering forgiveness of sins through his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. One day Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.